In this grade 12 economics video, we are preparing for the 2025 October November economics finals and we are looking at the exam scope for your paper 1. We are going to go through all the topics that are going to be in your paper 1 and what to study inside of them. And we are also going to look at the full paper overview and how the marks are allocated so that you are fully prepared for your exam. And then lastly, in another video, we are going to do possible essays for the exam. First, we're looking at the total overview of what to expect out of your question paper, starting with the main topics. That is our first column there. In our main topics, we have macroeconomics, economic pursuits, and then we also have questions where they are mixed. You're not going to have any of those in section A and in section B, hence they are shaded with purple, but you're going to have the mixed questions in section B only. In section A, you're going to have three types of questions, the multiple choice questions, which for macroeconomics, Economics and economic pursuits you're going to get four questions each worth two marks per question which means they're going to be eight eight and they are all compulsory and then matching columns you're going to have four questions again but this time they are only worth one mark which is going to total up to four four for both macroeconomics and economic pursuits and then the last question is where you have to give the term this is where they give a description you give the term for those for both topics you're going to have three questions each for one mark which totals up to three three then we move on to section b in section b we have three types of questions again we have the short term questions which are the straightforward easy mark questions that you either have two questions that are worth one mark or you have one question that is worth two marks yeah uh, you will have um two for macroeconomics two for economic pursuits and two that are mixed meaning that they are macroeconomics and economic pursuits then we have the data response questions these are the ones where you are answering based on a case study a cartoon or a graph it's going to be a number of questions under that data and those number of questions are going to total up to uh 20 marks meaning that you're going to have two datas that have a number of questions under them hence the totaling at the end is worth 20 20 marks and then the last one is the eight mark questions these are going to be a single question that stands on its own but it's worth 20 i mean eight marks sorry is going to be worth eight marks you're going to have two one that is in the middle class and one that is in the higher class for both macroeconomics economic pursuits and one is also going to be in macro and economic pursuits as a mixed question remember in section b you get to choose you don't have to answer all three of the main topics you can just choose two for yourself then the last section is section c where your essay is divided into two parts the main part which is worth 30 marks and the additional part which is worth 10 marks remember here you will choose only one main topic Next, we have the exam scope as per the examination guidelines, and we have the two main topics that we know belong to our paper one that is the macroeconomics and economic pursuits. As far as section A of your question paper is concerned, both of these topics are compulsory, meaning that when you're in section A, you do not get to choose whether you're answering macroeconomics or economic pursuits. You have to answer all the questions that you see in your section A provide given or despite the fact that they come from macroeconomics or they come from economic pursuits in section b and in section c that's where you get to choose between the macroeconomics and economic pursuits but in section b also remember there is also a third option which is the mix of macroeconomics and economic pursuits so let's look at the macroeconomics with macroeconomics we have the circular flow we have the business cycle we have the public sector as well as the foreign exchange market remember that uh, protectionism and free trade is no longer part of macroeconomics it is now in economic pursuits so if you're focusing on macroeconomics for your section c as well as your section b just know that you are only covering four topics which is the circular flow once again the business cycle the public sector and the foreign exchange market my recommendation is that you study everything that falls within these topics because even though um, for section C, 
not everything may be asked depending on what was asked in your preliminary and your previous uh, papers throughout the year but for section b and for section a you are still going to be asked a number of questions coming from those topics some of the questions may be even repeating themselves just stated a little differently so with the circular flow i would make sure that i cover the diagram i cover the injections i cover uh, everything when it comes to the flows the real flow the money flow i cover the multiplier for the business cycle i would also make sure that the types of the business cycle uh the new economic parity new, the policies make sure that you cover everything as well as the forecasting and then the public sector uh reasons for public sector failure uh, objectives of the public sector and then when it comes to foreign exchange market once again make sure that you cover everything uh reasons for foreign exchange advantages of foreign exchange markets for example make sure that you cover literally everything and then when it comes to the economic pursuits we start with protectionism and free trade a very common question when it comes to this is arguments for uh free trade and protectionism uh so those are the ones that i, I would focus on together with export promotion and import substitutions uh we will cover those a lot more in detail when we do that video that i promised on the possible essay questions but when it comes to the scope itself section a and section b remember you still have to cover everything anyway and i always recommend that or, or rather i'm of the belief that if you study well for your section a and your section b you will not struggle with your section c then we have economy we have economic growth and development as well as industrial development policies economic growth and development is a standalone topic and then when you have industrial uh, development policies that's where we we'll look at the policies usually that focus on what happens happens in the economic growth and development of south africa specifically and then lastly the last topic you have is going to be economic and social performance indicators where you're looking both at the economic indicators and the social indicators once again i will make sure that i cover everything even if i know that for section c i'm going to choose macroeconomics remember you still have section a and section b to cover so ensure that you have covered all your bases recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below